Czechoslovak Tatra was always special car manufacturer, whether we are talking about design or technologies. And today I'm bringing you this Tatra 603, which brought end to a famous era of this manufacturer from socialist Czechoslovakia. And together with its owner Andrej, we will show it to you in details. So right now we are sitting in the car I have been so excited about and right next to me is Andrei, the owner of this beautiful car. And the first question is, is it an original piece or this car has been restored? Well, this car was completely restored from scratch. They were never sold to normal people, only to enterprises owned by the state or to state officials. So this was built as a company car. Well, there is an old Slovak saying, the best rally car is the one owned by your company. Do you agree? But sadly, this is probably how this car was treated. How many of these 603s have survived until today? I think there should be plenty, somewhere around 20,000 were made. But we cannot be sure how many of them survived at the end. We simply don't know. Many of these cars lost their registration during the years, so probably some of them are still sitting in some barns. So you said this car went through a reconstruction, so did you have to start from scratch? Its story starts on a tow truck en route to a junkyard. It went through Liptovsky Mikuláš, where I live. After seeing it, I immediately ran after it and stopped the tow truck, which was driven, funnily, by my good friend. I took it. In a few minutes the Tatra was standing on its own wheels in front of my house. Okay, and the real condition was? Well, since 2010 the car was parking outside non-stop. So you can imagine the condition, so I had to make a complete reconstruction. But firstly I replaced the battery, put some gasoline inside and after approximately 10 minutes of revving she started. What a surprise! And immediately I had to try it on the road, so I took it for a short spin. The brakes worked, lights worked, unfortunately horn did not work. But all in all, to my big surprise, the car was able to drive. But the chassis, it needed to be done, it was in a very bad shape. So my logical question would be, how hard is to get spare parts for a car like this? As you can imagine, as the time goes by, it's harder and harder. Some time ago you could get even new spare parts, but not these days anymore. And when it comes to body parts, they can be still custom made. There are few very clever people to do that. And if you want to buy something ready-made, around 50 to 60% body panels can be today bought as a replicas. So you finished the bodywork and what did you do to the engine? Did you rebuild it or you just let it as it was? The engine was in a very bad shape too, so I had to rebuild it. You could start the engine, but at the end when I opened it, it was in a terrible, terrible shape. So the engine went a full restoration. And in details it means the crankshaft, new bearings, new pistons, new cylinders, basically everything you can imagine. And all these spare parts I could get from old stock, luckily. So we can say everything that could be changed was changed. How much time did it take? I would say probably less than five years. So I started in 2013 and in 2018 I finally passed the technical inspection here in Slovakia. As you can see, this car is driving with the normal wide license plate, so it's not registered as a historical vehicle, but rather as a normal vehicle. Which is on one hand good, but the other one, you have to meet the emission and technical standards every year. This car is taking part on many car meetings here in this area. So every year I drive roughly around 2000 kilometers. Oh, and I just realized that when we went on that pothole filled road, this car was very smooth over while gliding over them. Yes, of course, the seats are literally a couch, but still, even for its age, this is an exceptional comfortable car. And as I said, this car was exclusively a company car. So the communist chiefs had to feel comfortable and safe in here. That means that each of these cars had its own chauffeur and the communist leaders were exclusively on the back seat. And these back seats, they look just as comfortable as the front ones. They are the typical design of 50s and 60s, they are connected together. 
So are these five or six person cars? Originally they were all six person cars, but later to a modern legislation all of them were changed to officially five passenger cars. And by the way, when talking about car safety, this car has officially no seat belts whatsoever. And by the way, what's the weight of this car? This car weighs around 1500 kilos without driver. Hmm, strange, I would expect much more. Ok, and what's the length of this car? It's almost 5 meters long. So even today a solid piece of car, solid piece of metal. All Tatra 603s were made in three evolutions. But you mentioned that officially there were only two generations. The main difference was the headlight design. The first generation was known for its three headlight design. In 57 a few examples went into the production. And this generation was made until 1963. Since 1964 all of them were called Shilhauka, which means crossed-eyed, because they all had their four headlights really close to each other. And these were manufactured up until 1967. And finally in 1968 this generation we are driving today was manufactured. Officially it's called 603-2 and this was made up until 1965 when it was replaced by 613. And when I said that 603 was end of an era, I was mainly talking about this beautifully shaped aerodynamic chassis. It was so beautiful. Actually this car has won several awards for design. This car is really a classic. Design of its successor 613 was inspired by the 70s, so it was boxy. And if you are talking about its family roots, we have to mention the predecessor Tatra 87. And of course Tatra 600, so called Tatra plan. All of them were designed according to strict aerodynamic principles of those times. And all of them had the same drivetrain layout. This means engine placed in the back, of course air cooled. And by the way, what type of engine cooling did the Tatra 613 use? It had an air-cooled engine, it was V8 as well, but it was 3.5 litre variant. And right here in this car we have 2.5 litre V8, of course air-cooled. But the interesting part is that you can see the ribbing on the inside part of the engine bay. Performance wise, these engines are nothing special nowadays. So how much power we are talking about? Roughly around 77 kW, which is around 100 horsepower. But the first model had only 73 kW, right? Yeah, yeah, that was less, not even 100 horsepower. The performance was anything special, but in those times, at those speeds, this was probably alright. And now my question about the gear lever, which is under the steering wheel. During that time it was a standard place to put the gear stick, even Volga 21 had the gear stick on this place. Did it ever come with automatic gearbox? I'm asking because some Volgas at the beginning of the productions they had. So Tatra 603, did it have one? As far as I know there was no automatic transmission in Tatra 603. Ok, and what about air condition? Did it come with one? I don't think so. The biggest technical feature in this car were disc brakes and brake booster. So no climate control, no power steering and surprisingly no heating as we know it today. So how did they solve it? Under our seats there is a gas heating they were using, which I must admit was not the smartest solution as many of these cars simply caught fire while on the road. And of course you could not regulate the heating they were producing. So it was either turned off or it was blowing at full speed. So this was the last generation of 603 based on the headlight design, right? So what else was upgraded compared to the previous versions? This was for instance the last model that offered drum brakes. Since the year 1970 every 603 came with disc brakes. The efficiency of these drum brakes after heavy use, from my experience, is nothing you want to deal with. Ok, let's say it without a diplomatic language, they suck. Design of this car was really like UFO at its time. Just imagine the old regular Škoda cars next to this one, it's a completely different car. It was like parking a spaceship next to a regular vehicle. 
Even the interior, the newer 613, everything was squared, but here it's still nice and rounded. And I really like the combination you have chosen, this white and red. And from the practical side, it doesn't heat up as much in the summer. We can call it period correct red leather with the white combination. It looks very nice, but mostly very unique. But to be honest, the color doesn't correspond with the year of manufacture. Simply the dual tone was available only on the first model, not on this. This was up until 1963, afterwards all cars came with black interiors. You can just imagine how was it like to drive black Tatra with black interior during the summer with no AC. I also heard story and please tell me if it's true or not. The story is that if the engine was broken in this car, it was not repaired during the old times, but rather it was replaced in the car for a new one. So they took the old one out and put a new one in, or they used just the refurbished. Yes, you are right, this was a common practice during the old times. Engines were simply replaced, not fixed in the workshop as it was much easier to take them out and put a new one in. So if there was a major problem with the engine, they just simply replaced it. And it took around one hour. And the same applies to chassis. And I really like the fact that this car has the original chassis from 1968-1969. Even though the corrosion protection in those years was very, very poor. And I know for sure that some of these cars were corroded enough just after four years of use. So common practice was they took this car to Mototechnad, which was the state on service. Then they disassembled the car, they moved the VIN number plate into a new body and that was it. An old car with completely new body came out of the gates of Mototechna. And now the most important question I keep asking people at the end of my videos. Would you sell or trade this car for anything on this planet? No, I don't think so. This car has a special place in my heart. I spend many hours on this car, so I'm not willing to count it. And to be honest, I already received many offers to sell this car. And some of them even surprisingly high, but... No, this car is not for sale, not until I'm still alive and healthy. So definitely not in upcoming years. I'm keeping it and I'm driving it. For me, this car is an absolute legend. Also, this is probably the closest I've seen a Tatra 603 these days to its original condition. And the interior is made in the way like the Western cars used to be. So the exterior color was transferred to the interior, creating a really nice visual. Even when my legs are on this beautiful car mat, I feel sorry because they feel just like a comfortable rack at home. And by the way, these formats, are these made to order or does somebody create these? Originally this car didn't come with velour mats, it came with rubber mats. And as you can guess, the rubber ones are not possible to buy anymore. Yes, you can buy clones, but the quality was terrible. So I finally decided to go for a custom mate. And by the way, I really like the look of these controls, they just look like an old typewriter. And next to it, an old school handbrake. So please tell me what are the next plans with this car? Are you happy enough with it right now? Well, this is still a car from 1969. So even I restore it completely, I always need to take care about it. So there is still plenty to do and improve on this car, a never ending story. And small reminder, if you like the car just like me, you can find its photos on Volan TV Instagram page. Make sure you check those pictures because our photograph, he just did a great job. Even the weather was beautiful and the scenery too, so make sure you check them out. And of course, if you are not yet the subscriber of Volant TV English channel, make sure to subscribe, just hit that button. So I can constantly bring you cars like this to this channel. 
More technical details and more photos you can find as usual on volant.tv website. I would like to thank you very much for showing me this car today. I would like to thank you Peter as well for traveling such a long way just to see me and my car. It was such a nice talk with you. So hopefully we will see each other in the future with my other cars. Pleasure is on my side, so thank you once again and see you in my next video.